I'm really happy to be here and to be on the same panel with Christina and Julia. Can you all hear me? Um, so today, I, I want to talk to you about a program that I started about, I think, seven years ago now. And the reason why I started this program was because of the fact that I'm really passionate about science communication, and I wanted to figure out a way to do it better. So, the, um, so I will start out by talk, telling you sort of like the framework that guides this work and why that framework has helped us in producing different science videos. So um, I, was, I, I was thinking deeply one afternoon about what can I really do to uh, bring my passion for science into a, a way in which people can actually understand it. So I came up with this framework years ago. Basically, every time you're doing science communication, the very first thing is to think about your audience. So the idea is that no matter where you're starting from, the audience, uh, broadly speaking, could be divided into scientists or non-scientists. Obviously, there is the intermediary audience. For example, I'm a physicist. If I'm working with a biologist in a, that domain, I become an intermediary audience. But what is important here is that um, the, the scientists are usually the minority of any population, whereas the non-scientists are the majority of every population. So it means that as, as if we're trying to do science communication, we need the voices of those majority population that we're really trying to reach. And the approaches by which they solve problem is actually different. So the idea was that can we combine those two approaches together in a way that is really engaging to now produce very powerful um, products. So that was sort of like the framework. And then from that, you could either uh, develop a, 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 an animation video or you could have a voiceover. You could just be an illustrator. It doesn't really matter. But I, I apply that framework to the work of, this, of the Cytone. So what is Cytone? Cytone is basically an experimental approach for uh, curricula or pedagogical material development that you can use to actually communicate science. What is important here is that you could, it has a component of storytelling. It has a component of visualization. It has a component of uh, high quality uh, multimedia. And so the, the Cytone group started really small. Uh, at that time, I had only two students that were part of the group. But now the group has obviously grown. But the idea here is the use of co-creation, which is actually a very foreign word for most scientists. Most scientists don't even know what co-creation is. So the idea is that for every project, there are uh, both uh, STEM and non-STEM student and faculty working together to develop the product. So we all come together once a week to, 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 to deliberate on whatever product we're trying to do. So this data is, for, is quite old, but what I would like to emphasize is that this shows the uh, major of the student that were working on that project during that time frame. That hasn't changed. So up to now, we have about, I have about 50% of the students in my group they are non-science students because we really need them because the idea is to keep the science correct but also to be able to communicate, the, use the language that is, uh, to be able to communicate the language in a way that the public can understand. So the non-science student actually helps us through this process. So that's the group as of last year. The group has really grown. As you can see, the group is pretty diverse. And um, there are some of them that have graduated. They've moved on to very important uh, science communication role across America. So what is the Cytone process? So, they, so the first thing is that once we figure out a story that we would like to tell, then we have to begin to write the story itself. Now, for, for each aspect of the process, it's an iterative feedback, meaning every member of the team we have the opportunity to contribute to the development of the script. So we have the story development, then we have the storyboard. Once we agree on the story, and we've developed the narrative for the story, sometimes it takes 
like five to seven iterative review to get the story correct. Then we move on to the actual uh, production of the, of, of the video. So, and even during the production process, we still go through the iterative review. We want to check for the color, the, the, um, the voiceover, all of it, we, we all work together in creating this in a co-creative space. So I'm just going to share with you some of the impact of the, of the Cytone uh, videos to date. Um, so obviously, the very first time one of the video was ranked number one on, on YouTube or Google, I was like, whoa, we're really up to something. But now we have a lot of videos that I, I, I don't care wherever you are. Anytime I travel overseas or in America, everywhere I travel, I, I Google some of the title of the video. They are number one on Google. So for example, if you Google the word echolocation, it's the number one video. So, so, so that's part of the impact of the video because it means that people might not read my scientific article, but they will watch a video. You know, you have like 100,000 views on some of these videos. So we also have survey. So meaning that some of the videos are used for outreach engagement, whereby we, we, uh, if, we want, if we want to discuss a particular topic, we might show the video pre and post. We, we, we do the evaluation through that. We do evaluate the students that have participated. Up to, uh, as of right now, I've had over 80 students that have been part of the group since it started. So we do evaluation of the student. Um, we have feedback from viewers. This is really uh, interesting. Now, some of the videos that have tens of thousands of views, you have people watching the video actually talking to each other and say, no, you should go to, 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 to two minutes, 0.5 seconds and see what they said. So it's, it's actually really engaging and you gather feedback from that. We also gather feedback from Google Analytics. So for example, the very first video we did was about seven minutes. And based on the feedback, I realized that actually we shouldn't be doing videos for more than three to four minutes because people won't watch beyond that. Um, so we've been lucky to be listed on a lot of organization website, both federal government website as well as private organization. And finally, we are now on social media. Uh, so, so those are some of the impacts. Um, so as I was telling you, these are examples of the videos. Those are the titles of the videos. And those are their rankings on Google search or YouTube search. So at this point, I would like to play one of the videos before I continue my presentation. You have the option of telling me which of the video would you like to watch. One is on self-assembly. Uh, and the other one is on CRISPR CAPS 9. Do we, I think we need to take a vote to make it legit, right? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so which one first? Which one? Uh, Self-assembly self is all about nanomaterial. Who wants to watch self-assembly? That would be my vote. <laughs> but <laughs> but it, who wants to watch CRISPR CAPS 9? Okay, CRISPR, okay. It, is. CRISPR yeah. it is. So it's interesting. The CRISPR video has over 11,000 views. It was published like four months ago. So, I mean, compared to the other video that has like a thousand views. So I guess this is a good uh, data point that, that we just had here. All right, All right so um, my conclusion, uh, so the Cytone model is a way to really engage broad audience. So you have, first of all, the students that are uh, in the group producing the videos. Remember, they are non-STEM students as well as STEM students, so they learn a lot through the co-creation process. So that could be applied to any other population, so that's a very good approach. The iterative feedback also is extremely important because everybody's contribution matters. We take that into consideration. The other thing I forgot to mention is that, so we meet every week, the group meets every week, we meet in a, in a space called the Science Center at Brown, which is a neutral space. It's not owned by any department. So everybody feel empowered to share their idea. And finally, so the, the, the process itself is applicable. You could use it in, in academia, in non-academia field. Um, so that's, I think that's my presentation. I would like to acknowledge all this um, uh, offices, funding that have been part of the program in one form or the other over the years. And thank you.